we have to have this little guy and a friend stay. Friend is there. And he managed to get in a lot of trouble. Well, last night was kind of a nightmare. <laughs> And today, I am not going to be milking. I left Mocha with two of her babies. And then I had to take inside the other two with me. I'm pretty sure they're going to be, or that they were nursing from Clara all night too, because Clara and Mocha are in the same area. So, I'm going to skip the milking today. I'm going to let everyone out. And I'll catch you up with what happened. But it was one of those scary movie moments when you're like, it looks so real that it's scary. Well, that's what happened yesterday. And there was so much blood everywhere. And I wasn't here to catch it as it happened. So I'm going to tell you what I think happened. And then I'm going to show you the results of that. This little boy, Ash, decided to scratch because, of course, it's itchy after the disbudding. And I think he caught on something. And what happened is that he um, got the skin, like he cut like this, as I'm assuming he was scratching like this. And he caught on something and the skin peeled and it was all over his eye. And I think we should rename him Scarface. <laughs> You can see this is the part where he pulled down into his eye. Um, I mean, it was a sight of a scary movie and he was bleeding everywhere and you know, he's white. So it was, you could see all the blood. It was even on top of his eye. It was like the eyeball itself that he had blood everywhere. You could see like his skull, you can see ugh, whatever it is that they have there and tons of blood. So basically you couldn't see exactly what it was, but you could tell that his skin was kind of flipped on top of his eye. So I decide to do something about it so i tried to catch him he starts running around the pen like a crazy goat i you know he is the wildest one and he's the one that i'm working on to kind of make him more human friendly he's the only one that really gives me the hardest time so he makes me chase him around the pen when i finally got him my instinct was to um, push his skin from here push it up and it went exactly where it was supposed to go. So it covered it. Now, as you can probably imagine, it was still bleeding from everywhere. You know, all the cut that he had, all that was like fountains of blood. Like I'm sure he couldn't even see from that eye because of that blood. Now, what he did has nothing to do with the disc budding, but it kind of does at the same time because it's that itchiness that they get as um, they're disbudded and as the horns start to die or the skin on top starts to die same thing you know even when you don't disbud they are still itching so they still scratch and sometimes they just peel that cap that dry cap that, that that kind of forms on top of the horn and sometimes you know they just bleed for the day it's a hundred percent normal talked to the vet when that happened to Gaia and Brie last year so I knew that was a possibility but the scratching that he did it was way way too hard so he ended up you know with a lot of damage and I'm still not able to find where he scratched I'm sure that I'll find it um, Thank you. 
um, it's probably you know some kind of metal or something and I am so very thankful that I gave him another tetanus antitoxin which is something that works the same day if you do CD and T and then this bud you have to wait about 10 days because that's how long it takes in the cdnt for the tetanus to actually be in their body and it's even better if you have the two doses so it's it's you know for my own peace of mind because people say well if you give them the the tetanus antitoxin two times already when you disbudded them before I don't think you should know I'm like no I'm gonna give it to them I'd rather be cautious about that and if you know it comes out or whatever I always redo it because I just don't want them to get anything from that wound basically that it's open and again there's people that leave their horns that's not the discussion here i'm just telling you what happened to me um, so. i put the skin back it was bleeding everywhere i took him inside i put him under the sink i kind of rinsed the side so i could see exactly where it was but i couldn't rinse it completely because i was afraid that the, the skin was going to peel back and i wasn't going to be able to uh, stick it together now this is all there's a skunk around and it stinks. I can smell it. I, I mean, not that he peed, but I can smell a skunk. Some, some, you might, maybe you saw it behind me. Anyway, so I put him inside. I washed the side. I tried to see where it is, but at that point, there was so much blood that he started to. I thought he was gonna faint uh, because he started to go limp, and you know his eyes were kind of wandering. And then all of a sudden, he looked very, very tired. And he's not that kind of goat. He's very wild. He doesn't want to be held. You know, I knew that something was wrong. So. Of course, the first thing I did was the same thing I did when they were bleeding or one, one of the boys was bleeding the first time I disbudded. So what I did was applying cornstarch. And, and the thing is that you have to apply the cornstarch and it doesn't automatically stop. You have to put the pressure on it. But there was so much blood and the cut was so big that I needed to put it um, and kind of press on it to make sure that it wouldn't keep bleeding. Long story short, it took me about 10 minutes to get the bleeding under control. Uh, once it stopped bleeding, he was tired, but he started to look a little bit better. I gave him some water and he wouldn't want to eat. He didn't want a bottle. He didn't want anything. He was just so, so, so tired. He started shaking, which is never a good sign in any animal. They're in some kind of distress if they're shaking, either because they're cold or they have a fever or there is something that it hurts. So they start shaking visibly shaking so um anyways i ended up bringing with him the black boy that we call toad he's the one that has just a couple of uh little white spots um, but he's the sweetest of them all and he loves all his brothers and he's happy to be with his brothers so I brought him inside with him. I didn't want him to feel alone or, you know, even though he was in distress, I knew that he'd rather have a buddy. And at the point when it stopped bleeding, I put him inside a little kennel with a straw and they kind of curled up and slept uh, for about, I would say, 15 minutes. Then I got them all, both of them out. I gave them bottles. The black boy had like five ounces of milk himself because he loves a bottle. But 
Ash doesn't like the bottle, so he kind of opened his mouth, chews a little bit on uh, the nipple, and then that's how he gets the milk. He probably got an ounce of milk, but he started acting back to normal. I put them on my kitchen floor, and they started walking around. They were not jumping and being happy or anything, but he started to be more active. In the end, I left the kennel door open so they could go in and out and they would go in and out throughout the evening um, just uh, sleeping and then coming out and exploring a little bit, going to my room, hiding under furniture um, and I just let them do that. At around 10, I got them both in Around 10, I got them both in a blanket. I put them on my lap and I wanted to keep a close eye and make sure that he wasn't shaking anymore, the um, silver boy by the name of Ash. And uh, he was shaking a little bit. I think he was in shock, to be honest. And that's what happens typically when a goat gets attacked or you know something happens and they're bleeding and, and they, they go into shock. I'm pretty sure he was in shock and I was able to warm him up and um, he slept on my lap with his brother. It was the funniest thing because I would go for Ash to put him on my lap and then Toad, the black boy, would come out and go under my dining table and you know look at me like, can I please go in your lap too? <laughs> because he wanted to be with his brother because I mean if there was one goat that I would say would be the perfect companion for any goat, it's Toad because he loves, loves loves every single goat and he is the sweetest like he would let the other ones do anything to him and he loves them just the same so that's pretty much what happened to him um i called a vet this morning <laughs> they said that um it's not as uncommon as i would think that they do that when they're scratching he's shaking because he's scared right now he's just been a little scaredy cat since yesterday with all this and the dogs are there <laughs> so he as you can see he's a little bit I mean it's dry completely but I the, the vet said not to wash it just yet because it could mean more bleeding so I'm gonna give him a bottle and I was told to reevaluate Come on, you can do this. And this is the shield that I was talking about. This is a water resistant um, aerosol bandage. And you're supposed to clean it before you spray it. But since you use it right after this budding, um, Right now, is he is still, I locked him inside the kennel. It, he's still in my kitchen. I'm gonna try to give him another bottle. The black boy toad, he had a bottle this morning and I am gonna try to give it a bottle to Ash and see how he's doing. And you can kind of see that he rubbed against me and look what happened. So I'm gonna let him be for a few hours and then bring him back if I see that he's scratching or hurting himself. And if I have to keep him inside the kennel for a few days, then that's what I'm gonna do. He was pretty much shaking this morning when I got him out. I don't know if he is still scared, he's still in shock, or there's something that hurts. So what I'm gonna do is try to give him a bottle and bring him back here so I can kind of keep an eye on him and see if he's being playful and active or if he's laying down and he needs to go back to the kitchen, staying warm and being taken he care of. He seems to be doing just fine. If anything, he's hungry and trying to find a teat. 
Mm, I'll keep an eye on him and separate as needed. There he goes with Mushroom, his bestie. He's very interested in <laughs> mounting his brother, and I think he's he's good. Mentally, he's good. <laughs> well, I don't know how good this is, but normal, I guess. Okay, you're gonna drink water. Annabelle, be nice to him. Mm -hmm. Hopefully he won't get into trouble. We'll see. The whole point of leaving him here, or to watch him with his brothers and everyone else, is just so we know if he's behaving normally. Because inside, he's very scared. I mean... Even though he was with his brother, he was in a new element and, you know, it's the kind of thing that you... Mm, it's not that he's not used to, so... Toad, on the other hand, he could live inside. He has no problem. He's your definition of an inside goat. He loves to lay down. It's a couch potato. He likes attention. Try to spread my wings so I can fly